I was waving at your photo. Did you get it? <laughs> you got it? <clears throat> This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 104 of The Real Word. Word is up. You almost cut me off there. Nicole. I know. Well, because I heard that maybe we were low on juice, but um, I oh. did bring, I brought it. I have a charger on my phone, so. You have a charger. It's not my fault. Way to go, Nicole. i trying. It's 2020, this, you know? This, Better every this day. This is the last low-budget real word of the decade. I'm predicting that right now. E Ooh, you want to do that? Well, well, we'll probably do a couple dirty ones throughout the throughout the year. I'm sure this one is dirty. It's Did better than dirty? last week. This is dirty. like down and dirty. We're like using all this half-assed technology. In I a, think I'm in actually year. looking beautiful. I got lights. Oh, you're great. Yeah, I've got cameras. I've got people. Yeah. I've got my. Yeah. I've got. I'm good over here. You, you, you should see. I'm I'm sitting in this little office down here in Florida. You've got all kinds of staff. It's like you're it's like you're the queen over there. And I'm who are those people that got just kicked out of the royal family. That's yeah. Me. Oh, Henry. He didn't get Harry. Harry. He didn't get kicked out. He actually decided to leave. He decided. He wanted. Uh, I think. I think he was pushed out. I don't know about that. Oh, did you all see right, that really funny meme though of um of Yoko Ono, like I broke up the um, Beatles and then um, Meghan Markle was like, hold my beer. It was funny. Did you guys see that meme? No, it was I did one. not see that meme. Right. Anyway, no. we'll maybe have we to, flash. Can, maybe we'll we'll have to pop that one here. up, right? Come on, we'll pop, yeah, swap, we'll, pop it up. That. I've always wanted let's to swap now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, this will, this will be the end. I'll be back in the studio next week. So it'll be the way we always do it. But we're getting closer. If we increase our budget to doing this split screen the right way, I'm looking forward to that. So well, I'm just excited to see you. I miss I miss having my my buddy. Yes, I'm well, I'm missing it too greatly. Okay, let's get into it. Hmm. Racket nice. number one. It's a realtor mag article, so way to go, Nicole. You know she's picking again. It's back. It's back. Racket number one. Restoring the norm of MLS cooperation. There does seem to be a lot of. We've covered this topic in the past. We just got an email from. Uh, from somebody who I think we'll we'll talk about in the future for sure um, about this rule. It was big news when it happened last year, and there still seems to be a lot of confusion about what this rule actually means. This rule doesn't mean you can't withhold properties from the MLS, but right. it does mean the minute you start publicly marketing, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, or a sign or flyer. You know, direct mail flyer. Yeah whatever when you start putting it to out to the public it must be on the mls and there's uh i guess a may what's the may 1st rule here or, or the may 1st target deadline that they're referring to in this article well that's when this is all supposed to be rolled out i mean this is going to go into effect as of may 1 that's the deadline mls's will have it sounds like there'll be a little bit of flexibility until everyone sort of you know, gets their hands deep into it. But it sounds like May 1 of this year will be the deadline for everybody to follow this new cooperation rule. So May 1 is the implementation deadline for the clear cooperation clear. policy. Clear. The first, I love the quote from uh, Kathy Elson of the, the CEO of Connecticut Statewide Smart MLS. Her, her, for right, right when you open this article, if you do, and we always link them up, have you ever received an inquiry about a property for sale but couldn't find it in the MLS? And she had an overwhelming response of agents saying, yes, this has happened to me, whether, you know, wherever their buyer found right. this on. So that's what this rule is really targeting, that statement right there. You yep. can't publicly market properties without putting it on the MLS. Well, it's a, there's a, it sounds like there's a 24 hour rule. So the clock starts ticking the moment that that hits any sort of social platform or any marketing paraphernalia or a sign goes in the, the ground. It sounds like you then have 24 hours to then put it on the MLS. 
Um, I think the last time Byron, you and I sort of chatted about this because again, it, it, it was coming, but we weren't really sure when. Um, you started questioning about the coming soon because on, on our MLS, we have a coming soon category and you were not really sure how it would affect that. But it sounds like there still will be the ability to do a coming soon. Um, but again, there's so many rules when it comes to the coming soon, like you can't show it. I don't even think you can actually put a sign out when you're in the coming soon program. Um, no, so can't. yeah, so it'll be super interesting to see. I think the biggest thing will be to see how are they actually going to be um, following up on all of this. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, who's going to, is someone going to be tattling or are there people following mm -hmm. up? There's um, always tattletales. Well, always, sure. there's always tattletales. So it'll just be interesting to see how they're following up. What are they doing? Um, and then what are going to be like the implications of all of it? You know, like, yeah. is there a fine or how do you get out of it? So it'll be interesting to see. But again, it's officially hitting May 1. So um, definitely something for people to start keeping in mind, especially if, you know, you're going to these properties when your photographer is there. I can't tell you how many times I see photos of that. Like the photographers are taking a photo and then, I mean, you're not even getting those photography, the, the photographs back for what, almost almost maybe two, three days. So it'll be interesting to see how it all, how it all unfolds and, and how they're going to actually sort of come after us. Yeah. The biggest misconception so far is this is not a coming soon ban. In fact, if you go down to the second part of, uh, of the article, this is, it does not prohibit coming soon listens. It does not prohibit office exclusives or marketing to private networks. You just have to follow the guidelines if you choose to be, a realtor, if you right. choose to be part of NAR, if you choose to follow the rules of your MLS. Of course, there are a limited number of agents and brokers across the country that have opted out of being a part of NAR, so they can make up their own rules, right? They don't have to follow the code of ethics like the majority of agents who are realtors, right? So I, I don't really see much of a change in anything that we do. Uh, I still, I'm, I'm still going to say the same thing I said last time. This is a shot at brokerages that were doing things like Compass was, which is marketing properties on their website and nowhere else. Mm -hmm. You can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that that's what it is to me. And do I think this is good for the consumer, bad for the consumer? I think every consumer situation is different. The majority of consumers want their property marketed to as many people as they possibly can at the same time to increase their chances of a high price offer. So, right. Well, it's super uh, interesting. I feel like you and I actually did our first deal together as mm. a, remember that? It was, it was an aerial photograph that was posted on Facebook that I happened to have a buyer. I mean, that's how really our first mm. deal even got done. So that's true. And that, that was, that is true. That was, that was a coming soon. Facebook post. You're you're definitely right about that. That was, this was years ago. Years. Um, years. In that ago. situation, I think it was. You know, I was representing the seller. I think we got our seller more money than we would have the other sure. way around. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Racket number two. The continuing rise of co living. This is an opinion article out of Inman. We'll link this up as we always do. Uh, Michael Zaransky wrote the article, co-living has been called the next big thing in real estate, even though it might seem like the same old thing many of us did in college. So what is co-living, Nicole? So what they're talking about here are individuals that are sharing pretty much like a whole apartment together. Um, there is one, there's like one kitchen. I mean, I'm going to say one bathroom, but I'd like to think maybe there's more than one bathroom depending on how many people are in there. Yeah, it says in the article, often sharing a bathroom. Yeah. Oh, I'm certain that they're sharing a bathroom. I mean, this is very different because I feel like in the past we have talked about these, um, I wouldn't say co-living, but the, more of these community like apartments where you have like your own apartment, but then there's like a community like pool room or, you know, like their main foyer is beautiful. But this is an actual apartment where you are sharing, it, just like you said, just like college. I mean, you're sharing pretty much like your house. Like you have one room that would be yours, I'm assuming. If you're not sharing like a bedroom, I'm assuming you'd have like then your own bed. But um, yeah, you're sharing a kitchen. You're sharing a bathroom. I mean, you're, you're really like if you're in a four bedroom house, you are renting one bedroom. 
Um, I think that this is certainly keeping costs down for because they're talking about mostly um, what are they talking about in here? Gen Gen Xers and millennials are going this route. Yeah. Gen Z and millennials. Um, right. Because obviously the closer that you get to the city, the more expensive it is to live. So instead of renting an apartment in New York City for, you know, $3,200 for a two, two square foot place, um, you know, you're able to get rooms for $600 that you're sharing with a group. So certainly a way to keep costs down. Certainly a very great way for these these homeowners too or these apartment owners to to actually maybe maximize their profit too right because then in that case you know even if um they have one renter for one bedroom at least they're getting sort of partial rent um until they find someone else to occupy the other room so yeah i mean let's face it this has been happening for years it's called house hacking somebody buys a house rents out a bunch of rooms and they're sharing the living room they're sharing the kitchen but what and the, the article references uh, Cushion Wakefield, which is obviously one of the biggest uh, commercial companies in the country, and they're talking about institutionalizing, much like self storage did was student housing, senior housing, medical offices, uh, giving it an institutional grade, so that this becomes uh, easier for a developer to build out. There's, I guess, 3,700 beds nationwide right now and there's another 9300 on the drawing board those numbers are small uh the institutional grade will help those numbers grow but to me there's going to be a cap on this because this is this is college kids i mean i'm right now i'm sitting in our william ravis naples office and the last couple weeks we've had guests at the at the condo so we had nicole's mother and her you're loving it uh Uh uh-huh you love it and her and his girlfriend (laughs) and then now my parents are down here and I got to tell you, I never even want to have a house guest, never mind communal living again. This has been one of the most traumatic two weeks of my <laughs> life, having these house guests in the condo. Oh, you never it's disappoint, my fun. friend, never disappoint. I'll never want to share a living room or, you know, a bathroom with other people that are not like my direct family. That is just not something I'm into. And I think as people age up, they're not going to be into it either. No, well, I think it's very different. I mean, you've you've lived in your own living space for multiple years. I mean, if not, at least probably 10. So to go back, I agree with you. But if you keep in mind, you know, these these young kids that are getting out of college and literally probably having, I mean, granted, they're probably moving to cities or areas that they want to. But I bet almost 50 percent of the time they're having to move to places that they don't necessarily want to go. But they're that's where the job is. And what a great way, though, to instantly meet people, you know, like you're you're sort of being forced into these situations yeah. where you're now having friends, um, you know, you're meeting different. I, I just I think that there's as much as college was horrible and I didn't enjoy sharing spaces, let alone having to put on flip flops when I took a shower. I mean, you did meet people. It was a great way. And it does state that in here, you know, sort of a great social um, sort of way to, to meet to meet people if you, you know, because instead of just getting an apartment, being on your own, you know, so I don't think it's a horrible thing, but I'm with you. I mean, I could Great never... way to pick up girls if it's co-ed. I think if you're a college kid and you got a tough time getting a girlfriend, join one of these co-ed, co-living situations and you'll be, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't see this lasting. I, I see these situations ending badly uh, over 50% of the time. People get sick of each other very easily. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm sour grapes, but... Well, I mean, you are sour grapes, but um, mm. I agree with you. I mean, you get a lot of mixed or people that are bringing in friends, um, ah. a lot of different personalities, alcohol. I mean, farting. It's There's all a lot of situations. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <laughs> it happens, Nicole. I, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. All right, that's a total racket. Let's get into our marketeer of the week. These guys have been around. We know these guys. Uh, we know a lot of the people on this channel. It's a Facebook group. We, we're we urging and encouraging everybody who's an agent, a broker, a team, whatever, to join this Facebook group. We usually don't do that either, Nicole. We usually don't push anything onto anybody. But this group well, is absolutely helping a lot of people. Including us. Their, They're super sweet to us, us too. Yep. Absolutely. They're helping a lot of agents in the industry up their video game. If you actually, Suave could put up my little Instagram from yesterday. If you saw my Instagram yesterday, it's all about video. How much can you put out? How consistent can you be uh, if you want to build a brand in this industry, no matter what market you're in? 
And so the marketeer of the week this week is R E T V. These guys just restarted their podcast. I don't know why they would stop and then restart. You I don't know. know do you, I, I got the impression that it wasn't a new one. Is it new? Oh, I mean, but it is uh, new. I didn't realize that they had just, I feel like this RETV podcast was brand new. I think ep- they just started episode one. No? No, I, I think Tim. So Tim Macy and uh, our buddy Colin, right? Yeah. Colin. Uh, I think they were doing a podcast together and now they've restarted. Yeah, either I mean, way. Yeah, rebranded, renamed. It, yeah, either way. Yeah. At the end of the year, they did their very first RETV Rundies. They gave out 30 awards and I don't, we're still giving them the marketeer of the week, despite the fact that they didn't give us an award. Well, but did you see? Did that. you see what they were? I mean, best best hair. I mean, you definitely wouldn't wouldn't win that one. Um, and then there's there's like worst elf award. I have no idea. I didn't I didn't watch this, but I think there's some awards on here that you'd be okay not receiving. Hmm. Best parody. We didn't do any parodies. Yeah, no. there's a whole bunch of them on here. Yeah. We didn't dreamiest, do music videos. The dreamiest it's- award. They should have had podcast of the year and throw, thrown it up to the real world. Member of the year, hottest in the office award. I mean, some of them are actually kind of fun. Hmm. They're doing a good job. I like I like what they're doing. There's, I think, just over 5,000 or almost 6,000 now members. Yep. And uh, so I urge you, if, if you're thinking about video, Colin Cameron. Colin, that's, uh, or Colin if Cameron. you can't. You can even reach out to Byron and I because it looks like, Byron, if you check out their Facebook page, we could actually invite you guys to join. So if you want to be invited to the group, reach out to us, leave us a comment, and I'll invite you guys um, to this In the comment sections, if you want to be added to RETV. Let us know. Put your name and anyone else you want in. We'll get you in. We're like the the bouncers of this thing. The bouncers? Yeah. Hmm. Just as long as you don't fart, we're good. Yeah, bouncers don't fart. They nope. look tough. Maybe you can be a bouncer. <laughs> you, you can be something else. All right. Appreciate everybody tuning in to this Real Word. Next week, I'm back in Connecticut in the studio. What's the temperature there, by the way? Uh, nine. Nine-ish. Mm-hmm. Nope, just nine. And then nine. My, I think my son asked me, what does it feel like? I said, I'm certain it feels like four, um, but I feel like four and nine are pretty much the same. I mean, once you go below 20, does it even really matter? I don't think it really no. matters. So. No, it doesn't. No. All right. I'll be back. I'll be looking forward to it. I'll be looking better than I did this week or last week uh, because I'll have the same quality of camera that Nicole has. Well, make sure you lay out in the sun. You got to get all the sun you can in the next few days. We'll have a level playing field. So you better go jump in a spray tan. I got it. I'm going to. All right. Thank you, guys. Keep it real. Bye, guys.